Hello, this is Elsa Moreno, and I am here to give you an introduction to watersheds. First of all, what are they? According to the National Geographic Society, a watershed is an area of land that drains or sheds water from the highest point to the lowest point. Let's take a closer look at our model. This is a watershed. In this example, the highest points are the mountains, and the lowest point is the ocean. As you can see, the water falls on the land from rain and snow and begins trickling downhill from the headwaters as runoff drains into a network of streams called tributaries. These tributary streams then flow into larger bodies of water, such as lakes or rivers. Riparian areas are important features of the watershed. This is the area of land immediately surrounding a water body. Plants and trees in the riparian area function as a buffer that provides clean water by filtering runoff, shade to keep the water cool, habitat for birds, fish, and other wildlife, and reduces stream bank erosion by holding soil in place. Another important feature are wetlands. Wetlands are areas of land that stay wet longer than other areas in the watershed. Plants that grow there are adapted to wet conditions. Wetlands help slow down the flow of water and recharge the groundwater supply. They provide filtering of the water as well as very important fish and wildlife habitat. The water keeps flowing through watersheds and ultimately reaches the ocean. The places where fresh water from the rivers mix with the salt water from the ocean are called estuaries. The water that flows through all these bodies of water is called surface water. But did you know that water also flows underground? This is possible when some of the surface water infiltrates into the ground becoming groundwater. Large underground reservoirs of groundwater are called aquifers. A healthy watershed acts like a sponge that absorbs water, stores it, and then slowly releases it from the soil during the dry season. Groundwater is what provides water for wells and keeps our streams and rivers flowing during droughts. Here in the Pacific Northwest, one of our biggest and grandest watersheds is the Columbia Watershed. Many of the rivers in Oregon are tributaries to the Columbia, including the Willamette River, the Deschutes River, the John Day River, and many others. You can see that within the Columbia watershed are many smaller watersheds, and inside of those are even smaller watersheds. Okay, so we just discussed some of the key aspects of a watershed, but why are they important? Well, easy enough. We all live in a watershed. No matter what state or country you live in, we are all connected through watersheds. Many organizations and agencies that work with natural resources are always looking for ways to keep our watersheds healthy. A great example of these organizations are watershed councils, whose main goal is to engage the local community to improve watershed health. Watershed councils work with many other partner organizations and people, including, for example, agricultural and forest land owners, government agencies, engineers, and community members. Some examples of simple but very impactful activities we can do as environmental stewards are the following. Number one, conserve water by taking shorter showers or turning off the faucet when you're not using it. Number two, never pour chemicals down the drain. Always contact your local waste management facility so that they can help you to dispose of them properly. Number three, make sure to always pick up after your dog. Number four, avoid using too much pesticide or fertilizers in your garden. You may even consider starting your own compost at home. Number five, make sure to recycle correctly by disposing your trash in the places where it actually belongs. Lastly, try walking or biking a little more. These are some of the most sustainable ways of transportation and can even allow you to connect more with your watershed as you take the time to look closer at the little things 
such as finding one of these marks next to a storm drain. Okay, so I just shared some examples of the things you can easily do to keep your watershed healthy. But if you want to take a step further, go ahead and find out the name of your watershed. Google it and see if there is a watershed council in your community. They may offer volunteering opportunities at some of their restoration projects. Here is a map of all the watershed councils in Oregon. My watershed is the Mary's River watershed. What's yours?